how much you sleep, how well you sleep, the pattern of your sleep, all that can affect your health. It might even affect how long you live. So here's what you need to know about sleep. All animals on the planet have some form of sleep. A typical human being spends about a third of their life sleeping. But scientists aren't actually sure why we sleep. It might be needed just for physical restoration, a time for the body to repair itself, or it might be more about energy conservation, or maybe it's required for us to consolidate our learnings and our memories. The problem is that in today's society, a lot of us just don't get enough sleep. And we know when we're not getting enough sleep because we have this drop off in our physical and our mental performance. And studies tell us that short term sleep deprivation does affect brain functions like logical reasoning and focus. And it can make us more irritable and anxious. And it's not necessarily just one bad night. If we miss a few hours of sleep for a few nights in a row, we build up what's called a sleep debt. And eventually that debt catches up with us. And if you feel like you're more likely to get sick if you haven't been sleeping well, you're probably right. It turns out that sleep deprivation also affects our immune system. In one study, people who slept less than seven hours were three times more likely to get a cold than people who slept eight hours or more. But there's no single magic number of hours that each person should be sleeping. The amount of sleep we need varies quite a bit between people and it even varies within each person over their lifetime. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine and the Sleep Research Society recommend that adults sleep seven hours or more every night. And most adults do sleep between six and eight hours a night, but not everybody needs that much sleep. There are these annoying so-called short sleepers who can function perfectly well on less than six hours of sleep. But it turns out that too little sleep and too much sleep are both associated with negative health effects. This study from the UK analyzed survey data collected over 25 years and found that anyone over 50 who slept an average of five hours or less had a higher chance of going on to develop chronic diseases like diabetes and heart disease. But at the same time, anyone over 60 who slept nine hours or more also had a higher chance of developing chronic diseases. And this was not the first study to show these kinds of trends. And it might be because too little sleep and too much sleep both are associated with increased signs of inflammation in the body. So this brings us back to around seven hours as a good average number. But it's not just your average hours of sleep, it's also how regular your sleep pattern is. In one study, if the amount of sleep people got during a week varied by more than 90 minutes between nights, they had a higher chance of showing signs of cardiovascular disease. And this might be because that variability ends up disturbing the natural rhythm of the body, which is called the circadian rhythm. And that can cause inflammation, it can affect hormonal responses, and it can affect the nervous system, all of which can lead to disease. So consistency matters. You can't get too little, you can't get too much, and you should try to be consistent between nights. And that's what we call good sleep hygiene. But what if you're doing all that and you still don't feel rested when you wake up in the morning? Well, don't forget, it's not just about quantity, it's also about quality. There are all sorts of other things like sleep apnea that can interfere with the quality of your sleep. In this US study, they followed over 170,000 people for an average of more than four years, and they defined high quality sleep according to five factors. Getting seven or eight hours of sleep per night, having difficulty falling asleep no more than twice a week, having difficulty staying asleep no more than twice a week, not needing any meds for sleep, and feeling rested after sleep at least five days of the week. If you met all five of those conditions, you had about a 30% lower chance of dying compared to people who met no more than one of those conditions. And that included a lower chance of dying of heart disease and a lower chance of dying of cancer. And the more of those factors you had, the better your health outcome was. Now we don't know for sure that it was the poor sleep itself that was the reason those people died sooner, but if you put all these studies together, it's hard to imagine that sleep doesn't play a critical role in our health. So what can you do to improve your sleep hygiene? Number one, get into a routine. It starts with having a regular sleep time and a regular wake up time every single day and make that cycle as consistent as possible. If you can, also avoid naps because you might not be as sleepy by bedtime. Number two, avoid snacking. You've gotta fight those munchies because those late night snacks also will tend to keep you up. Number three, avoid stimulants. For example, if you like your coffee, you have to find a way to avoid caffeine after around lunchtime. And although alcohol initially makes you sleepy, 
It ultimately does disrupt your sleep, so avoid it for at least three hours before bed. And nicotine is another stimulant. Whether it's in a tobacco cigarette or an e-cigarette or a nicotine replacement product, ideally avoid these before bed. Number four, avoid screens. The other thing we all do and we really need to try to stop doing is looking at our phones and our tablets before bed. For example, that blue light coming from those phones has all sorts of effects on our sleep pattern. So cut out those screens for a minimum of 30 to 60 minutes before bed. And the last one is exercise. Studies actually show that exercising four to six hours before bedtime makes it easier to fall asleep. Other than taking meds, this is the one key thing you can do to help yourself fall asleep every night. So sleep matters, not just for how well you're gonna function the next day, but over time, the quantity, regularity, and quality of your sleep may play a role in whether you develop certain diseases and even a role in how long you might live. Now it's tempting to cheat on sleep, but eventually that will catch up with you. So get started now. Invest in yourself by investing in a solid sleep routine. For more on health and science, subscribe to the feed.